Let's turn our attention to operating leverage. We're going to look at this in a little greater detail, starting out by considering the idea of a break-even analysis. But what do we mean by operating leverage again? Well, it's the extent to which we have fixed assets, which then become fixed costs, the extent to which those are being used by the business. Uh, fixed assets turn into fixed costs. That You probably already recognize that, but if you have an asset on the balance sheet, the way that asset turns into a cost is over time typically through depreciation. Um, there's also a, a, a cash cost of the asset on the front end. If you buy an asset, uh, you have to uh, expend some cash in order to, to get that. So there's a, there's a cost, uh, not, a, not an accounting cost, but a cash flow cost on the front end or depreciation, which is sort of an accounting expense or an accounting cost uh, after the asset is purchased. We have, we typically think in terms of two types of operational costs, fixed costs and variable costs. Variable costs, for example, being salaries, perhaps fixed costs being plant and equipment. Um, there are some costs that are, we think of those as semi-variable. Uh, they're not completely variable, but they do, uh, they can change to some extent with the level of production. So maybe utilities, if you only run the plant um, uh, for two shifts instead of for three shifts, uh, you might turn the heat down a little bit overnight when if you're running it for three shifts, you need to keep the heat on to keep your employees warm, um, but it's not completely variable. Uh, having said that, uh, and, and in the long run, all costs might be thought of as variable. For our purposes, we're going to sort of assume away semi-variable costs because it's easier, at least initially, to analyze uh, the impact on operating leverage of these fixed costs if you just deal in sort of a fixed and variable world. So we're going to, for our purposes, we're going to make this semi-variable item just disappear. We're only going to worry about fixed and variable costs when we're looking at operating leverage. To start with, let's consider break-even analysis. And we're going to look at a hypothetical firm, and we're going to produce some assumptions for this firm. It's selling some product that it's pricing at $2 per unit. So for every additional unit that it sells, it gets another $2 in revenue. The cost of producing this unit, the variable cost, is only $0.80. Cents. <clears throat> that gives us a contribution margin which is the additional profit that we make on each unit of $1.20. So we're getting $2, it's costing us $0.80. Cents. We're making $1.20 on each additional unit. That's our contribution margin. In addition, this firm has some fixed costs. It's got $60,000 in fixed costs. Even if it produces no units at all, it's going to have to bear a $60,000 cost. So. Let's look at a break-even chart for this particular firm. Uh, describing this chart, we look along the, the bottom here, the units produced. We have right along the bottom of the chart various potential production levels, 20 units here being produced, 120 out here being produced. And for every level of production, we're going to have along the other axis revenues and costs. We're going to plot those both on the same axis. The revenues are uh, charted along a line here. The costs are this red line that we're going to see right there, but each of these is in uh, related to the number of units. Let me do a little clean up. So that's the basic layout of our chart. So let's start with looking at the revenues that are produced. Remember our revenues are $2 per unit. So our revenues that are produced lie right along this line right here. It has a slope of 2. So when we produce 100 units, 
that's a revenue of 200. So for 100,000 units, we have 200,000 in revenue um, because we're earning $2. Uh, we have revenues of $2 per unit. If we only produce 20,000 units, we only have 40,000 of revenue. The costs, on the other hand, really have two components to them. We have both fixed and variable costs. Our fixed costs are always $60,000, and so this little line that we have right here represents our fixed costs. Uh, it's unchanged no matter how many units we produce. Having said that, on top of the fixed costs, we also have variable costs, which sit right here. The slope of this is... 80 cents per unit. So a slope of 0.8. In total, this whole area under this right here, this line really, that line represents the total cost. So our variable costs are the difference between, say, this point and this point. That's our variable cost for that number of units. But our total costs a little cleaning up. Our total cost then fly right along that line and represent the, uh, the, the total costs, fixed and variable, that we're going to incur. So looking at this chart, we see that, of course, as we would expect, because the slopes are both positive, the more units we produce, the greater the uh, revenue, that's upward sloping. Our first line is upward sloping. The greater our revenue, right here, also the greater the costs. But we don't earn profits in all instances. We only earn profits where our costs are less than our revenues. So we're earning profits when we have fairly high levels of of units sold in this blue area, that's the amount of the profit. The amount of the profit would be the distance from the revenue up here down to the cost. So at any given point, so this would be our profit at 80, at 80,000, at, at 80 unit, 80,000 units. Our profit would be the length of that little black line. When our costs exceed our revenues, we're down here in the loss area right here, so that at this point our losses are incurred because our profits, our revenues are less than our costs. Uh, if we don't sell anything, our loss is going to be $60,000 because that's our fixed cost, so that's this little area right, right there. That's 60000 Now, the purpose of, of creating this chart was to find one particular level of production and that particular level of production is the level of production in which we break even, and that's where our costs exactly match our revenues. And that's going to occur at one point right there. Let me track that down. We find that at that point we're, we have 50,000 units, and we come across here, and that's a point at which our, both our revenues are 100,000 and our costs are 100,000. So we can think of, we can look at that another way, but the point here is the break-even point is at 50,000 units where the total costs and the total revenue lines intersect. Our total cost line was 100,000, if you'll recall. That's the total cost, made up of 60,000 in fixed cost and 40,000 in variable cost, which is our 50,000 units times 80 cents per unit. In contrast, our total revenues are 100,000, where we have 50,000 units, $2 per unit, 100,000 in costs, 100,000 in revenues, we have zero operating income.
we could calculate, rather than going through the, the chart or developing the chart as we did, um, which we were looking at graphically, algebraically we can calculate the break-even point by simply dividing the fixed costs by the contribution margin. So remember our contribution margin is the price of each price per unit minus the variable costs per unit. So we'll just uh, create over here a little formula, break even equals fixed costs over P minus VC. Okay, so the break even level, the number of units to break even is equal to these fixed costs divided by the contribution margin. So when we have enough units that our contribution margin uh, per unit exactly matches the fixed costs, the, the, the sum of all the contribution margins for each unit, you add up the contribution margin for every unit, if we have enough units, it equals the fixed cost, it's going to meet this uh, meet this equation. In our case, we had $60,000 in fixed costs, $20, or $2 price, $0.80 cent variable cost per unit. Our contribution margin was $1.20, and we had $50,000 or 50,000 units at the break-even level. So returning to our chart, that's exactly what we found. We had 50,000 units at that break-even level.